نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لي صدری و یسر لي امری و احلل عقدتا من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لي وزیر من اخلی اللهم فکهنا في الدین رب زدنی علما اللهم إني أسألك علما نافيا رزقا طيبا وأملا متكبلا آمين ثم آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سورة الطغاب Revealed in Medina has 18 verses, two stanzas, 64th by the order of arrangement and 108th by the order of revolution. The uh, verse number nine, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Zalika yawmut taghabun. So with reference to that, where Allah has mentioned yawmut taghabun, this surah gets its name. Now, regarding the period of revolution it was uh, we learned that uh, it was partly revealed at makkah and partly at medina and uh, the verse number 1 to 13 they were revealed at makkah whereas verse number 14 to 18 they were revealed at medina but majority of the commentators they regard that the whole of the surah is revealed in medina but there is a slight difference of opinion now regarding the main theme and the subject matter of the surah <clears throat> in the verses allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has addressed all the men and they have been made aware in few brief sentences about the four fundamental truths the four fundamental truths being the first that the universe in which we are all living is not godless number one the second the universe in which we are all living is not was not created without any purpose or without any wisdom but its creator has created it not just under a delusion that is that is as if it was a mock show which began without a purpose and will come to end without a purpose no it was created with a purpose what khalaq al mauta wal hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala this was a period and a place for trial of the human beings thirdly that the excellent form that allah has created you with and has chosen you to be the superior being he has given you to choose between belief and unbelief unless without this your life will be useless and meaningless so that it may be of no consequence whether you choose to be belief or unbelief in fact allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching how you exercise your choice so the both forms of choices will be availing you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be observing over you and the fourth thing is that you have not been created irresponsible and unanswerable you have to return ultimately to your creator and uh, you have to meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will be aware and who is aware of everything in the universe and nothing absolutely nothing is hidden from him so these four fundamental truths about the universe and the man they have been told and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he addresses to the people who adopt the way of disbelief who who prefer staying in a state of disbelief and allah addresses them and tells them first that they refuse to believe prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who had been just sent for their guidance and the result that allah too left them to themselves and they invented their own philosophies of life and second is that uh, they also rejected the doctrine of hereafter and that there was no life here after they would have to render on account of their deeds before allah this has corrupted their whole attitude towards life and this has led to impure morals and their character has uh, become polluted with sins so uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained that the deniers of the message of truth they have been admonished 
they have been admonished they to wake up and believe in Allah, his messengers, and in the light of the guidance of Quran, if they wanted to avoid the fate met by the former people. And then Allah has uh, also addressed all those who adopt the way of fate. All those believers have also been addressed. And here, addressing the believers, Allah has clearly told them that whatever affliction, whatever affliction befalls a person in this world, it befalls by the will of Allah. And if in this state of affliction, a person remains steadfast to faith, then Allah blesses his heart with guidance and Allah helps, Allah protects and guides and supports that person. And the second thing which the believers have been told is the believer is not required to affirm the faith with tongue only, just by the word of mouth. Doesn't he need just doesn't need to declare and announce that he's a believer? But after affirmation of faith, he should practically, he should practically, physically, by his deeds also obey Allah and his messenger. And uh, he will be, because of this obedience, he will not suffer any loss. And thirdly, all the believers have been told that they should place their trust in Allah alone and not in his own power or any other power of the world. And fourthly, that the worldly goods and the children, they are a great trial and they are no doubt a temptation for the believers and they distract the man from the path of faith and obedience, but they are what? They are a trial and uh, they should spend their wealth and they should spend their lives in the path of Allah so that to remain safe against the temptations of shaitan. And the fifth thing all the believers have been told is that uh, every man is responsible only to the extent of his power and ability. Like Raha Fiddin, that every man is responsible only to the extent of the power and ability he has. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not demand the man should exert beyond the power and ability. And in any case, we should try the best according to our powers and abilities because Allah is all seeing, all hearing, and all knowing. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. يُسَبِّهُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ لَهُ الْمُلْكُ وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ فَمِنْكُمْ كَافِرٌ وَمِنْكُمْ مُؤْمِنٌ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِالْحَقِّ وَصَوَّرَكُمْ فَأَحْسَنَ صُوَرَكُمْ وَإِلَيْهِ الْمَصِيرُ Allah says, whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth is exalting Allah. To him belongs dominion and to him belongs all the praise. And he is over all things competent. Ya hayu ya qayyum bi rahmatika nastaghis. It is he who created you and among you is the disbeliever and among you is the believer. And Allah of what you do is seen. Rabbana. Inna amanna, Rabbana inna amanna, faqfir lana zanubana vakina azab nar. He created the heavens and the earth in truth and formed you and perfected your forms and to him is the final destination. He knows what is within the heavens and the earth and knows what you conceal and what you declare and Allah is knowing of what is within the breast. Has there not come to you the news of those who disbelieved before? So they tasted the bad consequence of their affairs and they will have a painful punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all from this painful punishment. That is because of their messengers used to come to them with clear evidences. But they said, shall human beings guide us and disbelieved and turned away and Allah dispensed with them and Allah is free of need and praiseworthy. Those who disbelieved have claimed that they will never be resurrected. Say, yes, by my Lord, you will surely be resurrected. Then you will surely be informed of what you did. And that for Allah is easy. So believe in Allah and his messenger and the Quran, which we have sent down. And Allah is acquainted with what you do. The day he will assemble you for the day of assembly, that is the day of deprivation. 
And whoever believes in Allah and does righteousness, he will remove from him his misdeeds and admit him to gardens beneath which river flow and wherein they will abide forever. This is the great attainment. In this verse number nine is the verse which gives the surah its name, Yawmuttagabun. Allah has mentioned first the day of gathering, the day of assembly. Which day is this? This is the day of resurrection. And how and why has it been called as the day of gathering and assembly is that all the human beings, all the human beings who were created from Hazrat Adam alayhi salam to the last human being on the day of before the day of resurrection, all of them, they will be resurrected and they will be gathered together simultaneously. So that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this in several places in Quran. And that is why it is known as the day of assembly or the day of gathering. And what will happen? What will be this day of gathering like? It will be the day of deprivation. What do we mean by the meaning of this word is too vast. It is too vast to be explained in a single word or even a sentence. Rabban is actually, it means in Arabic is, is uh, it is concerning commercial and business transactions and a person being deprived of his share. Rabban is a condition in which a person being deprived of his share, a man harming another inadvertently in business or mutual dealings is what a person is is doing what is doing rabban for the sex for the second person this means that the day will be tagabun it will be a mutual it will be a day of mutual loss and gain among the people there will be people who will lose who will face failure and there will be people who will gain and who will be successful who will lose who will be who will be faced with failure will be the people whose weight of the sinful deeds will be heavier than the righteous deeds. And these will be the people of hellfire. The inmates of the hellfire will be those who lose and those who will be subjected to failure. And the people who will be successful will be those this is the loss and this is the this is the gain the people are inmates of Jannah, their their uh, good deeds their pious and virtuous deeds they will be heavier than their sins and so they will they will be gaining and they will not suffer from any loss and we also learn from tradition that on the day of Rabban, on the day of Yom Muttagabun, the dwellers of paradise will also take away the share of the dwellers of hell. And we learn by what the commentators have explained that on that day, the wronged ones also, all the people who were wronged, the wronged ones, they will take away so many of the good deeds done by the wrongdoers as may be of suitable compensation for the wronged suffer. We learn this all philosophy from the traditions also. Prophet Sallallahu said that whoever, he was informing the companions and he was advising the companions that whoever bears a burden of a wrong done to his brother should compensate from, for it here. Here, that is in this world, for in hereafter, nobody, no one will have any wealth or money for compensations. Therefore, some of his good deeds, some of his good deeds will be taken from him and given away to the wronged person. And if he did not have any enough good deeds, some of his sins, some of the sins of the wronged person will be transferred to him. Similarly, in another, in another tradition, in Musnad Ahmad, it has been reported that Prophet ﷺ said, no dweller of paradise will enter paradise and no dweller of hell will enter hell until he will have compensated the other person for the wrong done to him. So much so that one will have to compensate even for a slap given to another person. 
And the companions asked, how will this compensation be made on the day of resurrection when we will be naked and we will be penniless? Prophet replied, compensation will be made by the means of good deeds and the evil deeds. It has been reported in another tradition that Prophet said he was sitting in an assembly and he said, did you know? Do you know who will be the poor of my ummah? People said, he who has nothing to possess. Prophet said, in my ummah, the poor person will be he he is he who will appear before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of resurrection with his acts, with his acts of salah, with his fast, with his payments of zakat, with his, with his, with his performing of pilgrimage. While he had abused someone, observed the property of another, shed the blood of his brother, then what will happen is that his Good deeds will be taken away and given over to each of those whom he had wronged. And when nothing will be left out of his good deeds to make compensation, then some of the sins, then some of the sins of each wrong one, they will be transferred to him. And he, he was, he will be then sent to hellfire. This will be the person who will be the poor and the deprived of the ummah of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. Similarly, in another narration, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked the companions that if, in the absence from absence from home of a soldier for the cause of Allah, a person treats his wife and the people of his home treacherously, and the person would be made to stand before the soldier on the day of resurrection, and the latter would be asked to take away whatever he liked from his good deeds. Saying this, Prophet ﷺ turned to the companions and said, then what do you say? That is, what do you think he would leave with him? This is, this is your mutagabun. Remember, another form of tagabun would be what? That in, in the world, the people go on comparing. They, all, they just go on competing and they just go on cooperating with each other in unbelief, in sin, in injustice, in wickedness, in all forms of wrongdoings and sinful act, people go on supporting and they go on cooperating with each other, enjoying full mutual love and friendship. But what, what will happen on the day of judgment is these people, when they will reach here after, they will suddenly wake up. They will wake up to realize that all what they had, they had supported was what? They were grievously mistaken and they were, dis they were deceived. And all the love and all their mutual bonds and all their friendships, they will change into enmity. And they will start abusing and cursing each other. And this will be the mutual loss on the day of resurrection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all from the, from the torments of the day of resurrection. But the ones who disbelieved, but the ones who disbelieved and denied our verses, those are the companions of fire, abiding eternally therein, and wretched is the destination. No disaster strikes except by the permission of Allah. And whoever believes in Allah, he will guide his heart. And Allah is knowing of all the things. So you do what? Obey Allah and obey the messenger. But if you turn away, then upon our messenger is only the duty of clear notification. Allah, there is no deity except him. And upon Allah, let the believers rely. And O oh, you who have believed, indeed among your wives and your children are enemies to you, so be aware of them. If you pardon and overlook and forgive, then indeed Allah is forgiving and merciful. Your wealth and your children are but a trial, and Allah has with him a great reward. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guiding all of us and instructing all the believers and warning all the believers that the family, the love of the family, the spouse, the children, and what? And the love of the wealth, all is what? They are a trial for you. And how are we supposed to relate with the trial? As I've already explained in Surah Al-Hadid, that there is no concept 
of Rahbaniyat in Islam. These are all papers. These are all uh, these are all test papers. They are all what assignments for us and a student who just walks out of the examination hall, leaving the paper unattempted is obviously bound and sure to fail. But what we need to do is we need to stay within these things. We just don't have to run away from them. We just don't have to walk about, walk away, leaving our wives and children and everything, our other worldly, worldly riches. We don't have to walk away. What we need to do and realize is take them as trials. We need to stay in this worldly life, but we need to be mindful, sensitive, God-fearing, and fearing hereafter. We need to acquire all these things and we need to gather all these things by lawful means and we need to use all these things and all these riches and wealth and we need to relate with all these relationships with a manner according to the teachings and commandments of Allah according to the limits according to the limits ordained by Allah and then we need to spend all these in the path of Allah to make what Al-Malu wal Banuna, Zinatul Hayat the Dunya, Wal Bakiatu Swalihat. Because Prophet has informed all of us that when a person dies, his deeds, the series of his deeds, they finish. But three deeds continue. The reward of three deeds continue even after his death. These three deeds are number one, the knowledge. The, the productive knowledge, the beneficial knowledge with the person imparted to others in his life. And the second is the wealth which he spent as charity in the path of Allah in his life. And the third is the righteous, the pious, obedient children, offsprings, which he left behind. And they keep on supplicating and praying for him. So these things are we need to remember to save us from the losses of what? Of Yaumut Taghabun. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasanatum wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina azab an nar. Rabbana hablana mina zwajina wa zurriatina kurrata ayuni wa jaalna lil muttakina imama. So fear Allah as much as you are able and listen and obey and spend in the path of Allah. It is better for you, for yourselves and whoever is protected from stinginess of the soul. It is those who will be successful. If you loan Allah a goodly loan, he will multiply it for you and forgive you. And Allah is most appreciative and forbearing, nor of the unseen and the witness and exalted in might and right. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi, subhanallah, al-azim.